<laughs> yeah, that's how that's how I roll right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't keep me up straight, can you? <laughs> Don't we get an intro? No, apparently not. That's that's pretty good though. I think Tina is upset. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> you knew. <laughs> Look, it's something for us. It is. It's R51. Yeah. It's, the package? Is and it from it's, you? It's hand wrapped, I can tell. <laughs> Paper clip closed. Paper clip. It has a okay, bow. Look at that red bow. bow. What, is this? what is it? What, what does it say? I don't know. It says try this. This is a gravity reverser. With a, a gravity green. reverser. <laughs> Can you feel it? I'm feeling it. Let me yeah. see. How's it work? <gasps> That's a magnet. He's so smart, isn't he? <laughs> you can keep this he's, save, he's saving me from my mm -hmm. embarrassment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was that mine too? too? Oh, wow. Thank you. Well, I get to welcome everybody here. So hello, and I'm very, very excited about what we're going to talk about tonight. And Dr. R is going to tell us all about it. Hello. Now? <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Look, you're surrounded. I, I don't get this gravity <laughs> thing. Well, about five years ago, when we were starting to see students graduating from the Cellus Academy, and they were doing really well, they were going on to universities, they're going on to jobs, many positions, and they're doing even very well in the university. We got really excited. And we thought, you know what, this is really working. This was a dream that started, you know, almost 20 years ago, originally. And the idea was, couldn't we use technology to help students succeed in learning? And and I think we achieved some pretty good success. But five years ago, I pulled together our core technical creative team and I said, guys, I want you to go on a, a journey with me. Imagine that we had magical powers and we could do anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. We could program things, we could invent things, we could make all kinds of sorts of things. What would we do to a cellus to make it even better than it is? In fact, a lot better than it is. And in the last five years, the cellus has really made a lot of progress. But five years ago, we started a project to develop the next generation of a cellus. Yes. And we came up with a lot of really, really, really crazy ideas that well, they would be very neat. No one could ever do it. <laughs> and then we set out to do it. And it took five years. If it was possible, I think we could have done it in one. But we did things that weren't possible. <laughs> yeah. And so we have a brand new version of Acellus that was made by Acellus Academy for Acellus Academy. This is unique to Acellus Academy. We call it Acellus Gold. Yes. And at that time, Science Live was just getting started, and we were trying to see if we could inspire students to succeed. Of course, you can't learn if you don't want to, no matter how good it's taught. So we needed to instill a motive, and I decided that the, the best way to inspire a student to apply themselves to their studies was to help them understand how valuable it was to them. The effort you invest in learning will change your life, that kind of a thing. So I brought a, a little prop today, which I'll just pull out. 
This is uh, a gold bar, pure gold, and good it's a lot heavier than it looks. It really is. It's surprisingly heavy. It is. This weighs a kilogram, or in other words, it weighs 2.3 pounds. It's, it's heavy. And that's one of the attributes of gold, is it has a high density. But gold is kind of magical because it doesn't tarnish. It keeps its shine, and it has other wonderful properties, too. And as a result of that, maybe I can actually, I'll put on my notes, do I? <laughs> maybe I can put it right there, and, and you can get a little shot of it. OK, you can see it. Gold. Uh, can also be pounded into paper-like thinness, so thin that you can actually see through it, and we use it in scientific researches and things. But the biggest thing that I want to talk about gold tonight is it's valuable. For 2,000 years, people have used gold as a way to make payments to each other for goods and services. And this single little bar of gold is worth $73,000 tonight. $73,000, it's a lot of money. If it was another kind of metal, the same size, it would be much, much less valuable. Education is something that really makes you valuable. I read a statistic that according to a, a detailed study, they, they discovered that students that finish high school over the course of their lifetimes will make more than this, over $100,000 more money because they finish school. And you know, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing to think about. You're sitting there studying and you don't realize, wow, I'm, I'm going to get paid $100,000 for finishing this. And it goes up even more for students that, was she pulling faces? <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, okay, do you want you, me to? Okay, <laughs> well, we'll see where that goes. Okay. So the idea was to make a version of a cellus that had gold built into it. We call it a cellus gold edition because when the students in the course of their studies, do something outstanding. They earn gold credits. And Acellus keeps track of and adds up these gold credits. And the idea is that when you have a certain amount of gold credits, you can spend them, you can redeem them for goodies, for goods, Acellus hats, things mm -hmm. of that sort. Yeah. So the students are seeing in a microcosm how Putting effort into studies really pays off, and I hope they, they really get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm very happy to introduce you to the future of Acellus, at least at Acellus Academy. We call it Acellus Gold Edition. Introducing Acellus Gold Edition, the next generation learning accelerator. Designed to grow with your student, with an elementary, middle school, and high school student experience letting them learn at their own pace while teaching one of the most important lessons in life, that knowledge is power. For every concept mastered, students are awarded gold, which can grow into a treasure trove of knowledge. Students can track their own progress or push the limit and even set goals of their own. Students can compete with their peers, make competitions of their own, follow classmates, and cheer each other's successes in a safe environment that cultivates positivity. And when their work for the day is done, students can write a book and submit it to be published, choosing from themes, characters, and props. And when writing the story, the system helps identify any possible grammar mistakes. Or they can practice writing letters spelling words, or solving math facts. They can write real code to program a robot, 
or design a circuit. The sky's the limit once you've got the learning down. It's time for students to be empowered by learning. It's time for a Cellus Gold Edition. That's incredible. <laughs> Go back to school. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, I do. Perhaps you can see that there is a tremendous amount of effort that has gone into this project. Yes. A lot of the guys that made this possible and, and gals are here today, and I want to thank all of you for the tremendous effort you've made and are still making. <laughs> a little bit about the status. Acellus Gold is now undergoing beta testing at our, our local test school, and the kids love it. The, the reaction, the response from the students has just been incredible. And I, I, I'm, I'm excited. And I think we should both go back to school. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But there's, there's a few more things that I, I really want to say about it. Uh, when a student uh, signs into the computer at the beginning of the day, of course, they, they've got all of their classes and they should spend a certain amount of time in those classes if they're going to achieve their, their year-long goal. They have a goal for the day, they have a goal for the week, and so they can really chart their progress. Well, Now, some of our students really, really enjoy Dr. Peget's course in social-emotional learning, and some of them think that's the only class they should do. They're right. No, they're not. <laughs> Just saying. Well, in Cellus Gold, if they go too far beyond their goal and, get, and do not pay attention to their other courses, pretty soon it won't let them back into that course. It, helps them balance out their, their pie. In fact, has a little pie showing that they're making all of the effort in all the areas that they need to. But when they have achieved the goal for today in all of their classes, then it unlocks all of the bonus things. And all of the bonus things are learning activities. And you saw just briefly how some of these are. One of the learning activities that really excites me is write a book. And you know, writing a book is very important creative work. Uh, when students are asked to write a paper or a book in a class, we notice that they usually just kind of freeze. And so in this case, they start out choosing a theme. And they can go through and they got a picture to help pull them in. And then they start choosing characters they're going to use in their book and they create the first illustration. And then they finally get down to writing the title for their book. And then they create each of the pages and, and it's the same kind of a process. There are all these tools to help them accomplish each of the hurdles of taking the next step. When they get down to actually writing the book, they're not just writing it, they are inputting it into our very wonderful writing tutor. Writing tutor is a tool that teaches students to write. And so as they start typing it into writing tutor, they're gonna get help with spelling, help with grammar, of course. But writing tutor helps them develop their vocabulary to write at higher levels. And they can do all of these things that they do in the regular class assignments. So this particular activity is actually helping students master one of the real important skills. Reading and writing is very important, and reading and writing well is very important. And this is a way so they can do it as part of the, the learning activities. Now, when the, the Cellus Gold was in the early, early stages of design, and we were doing the very basic inventioneering of what it would be, we, we discovered 
some wonderful talent to help us get it right. And it turned out to be the parents of our Salus Academy students. And a lot of parents got involved, and they got involved by making recommendations, suggestions, and giving us ideas on what we could build into this thing. Um, a lot of parents, since students do sell us usually at home, being homeschooled, a lot of parents have their eye on the classes and the work their students are doing. And because of that, they were able to give us a lot of expertise and knowledge about what works and what doesn't, how to enhance this and how to enhance that. And so a lot of the really nifty things that are built into here are something we need to thank you parents for. So you parents, thank you for this. Thank you for your input. And by the way, the idea of a cellus is not that we do it and ship it, it's that we do it and then we test it in the field and then we keep refining and refining and refining. So I hope you'll keep sending those ideas and the inputs uh, because they are really the secret of, of the creativity and success behind this thing. One of the things that a lot of parents have asked me for in the, in the last two and a half years mainly was that we double down on some of our courses. Uh, when you're teaching students at 7,700 schools throughout the country in all 50 states, you have to teach courses in such a way that they follow the guidelines, the curriculum standards of the different states. And that's quite a challenge. And we have made it the, the business and the goal of Acellus to be very, very neutral and to never get involved in pushing one point of view over another, but to try to be very, very fair uh, with all people. This time, some of the parents came to me and said, we, we like the way you teach U.S. history, we like these different things, but for our family, would like it heavier dose. We, we want it taught strenuously. What do you mean? We want our kids to appreciate and love this country like we do. Can you really lay it on? <laughs> and I thought, well, since I love this country, uh, I think I know how we would do that. And we want to be careful because there are so many different points of view in our nation, so many different opinions. Some people say that no matter what you say, you're going to hurt someone's feelings. And I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But sometimes, parents said, we need our children to be taught in the traditional ways, using the traditional values upon which our, our nation was founded. And I thought long and hard about it, and I thought, well, how do you please everybody? And um, finally decided that since we're a homeschool, a Cellus Academy, an accredited homeschool, that we have more opportunity to involve the parents in the decisions regarding what their kids study than any other school in the nation. So we have come up with some special versions of some of our courses that teach it more strenuously for the families that want it. And these are a, a special option that's available. And we, we're trying to really spell out what's different so a parent can quickly say uh, no or yes or, or whatever. And to give you a little bit of flavor of that, uh, I want to give you a sneak peek at a couple of these special classes. Now, these are, these are lessons that are not taught unless uh, a parent opts in and says, I want, this is the version I want my student to have. Right. So um, I am very <laughs> open to feedback right now. This is research for me. So if you have an opinion, a point of view, if I step on your toes or if this steps on your toes, I'd like to know. If you like it, 
I'd like to hear that too. <laughs> and some of you parents uh, have found that a good way to reach us is through the, the Science Life comments. Uh, there are other ways that, that you can reach me. Uh, a lot of people reach me through the uh, the Celis Academy page and also through rogerbillings.com. There's a way you can send me a message. So whatever way you do it, uh, reach out and let me know what you feel, okay? But I'd like to play you two videos and now please understand that another huge dis difference with the Celis Gold is that it has the ability to play videos in very high definition, high resolution. Uh, with a Celis, we, we made the videos, we filmed them in high definition, but we have to deliver them to all of our students and some have better internet than others. Some schools have better internet than others, so we, we had to maintain a fairly low definition. With a Celis Gold, we filmed all of our courses in much higher definition and we, we deliver it to the student at five different bandwidths depending on the network connection you have. So you're gonna see that the video is much sharper and our students love to be able to really see what's going on in the classroom, especially in the writing on, yeah. on the, I guess we don't call them a chalkboard anymore, on the electronic board, whiteboard. <laughs> so I'd like to have I'd now like to introduce uh, our wonderful U.S. history instructor, Mr. Todd Edmund, and he has uh, filmed a series of courses that help students in families that parents opt in for this to really appreciate what it is that some of us think is so great about America. This is one of those lessons. I want to take a second and really talk about what unites us and what principles unite us as Americans in this country. We often talk about the Founding Fathers. Well, there's reasons that this government they set up has actually lasted so long, but there's also an understanding that goes with it, something that unites all Americans into the society that, that we live in. And what those are called are virtues. When they were creating the country, this was a brand new idea. They couldn't look at another country and say, well, let's do what they're doing. This was totally new. So I, I give them a lot of credit because they, they really thought it through. And given the fact that we're still in a society that has these virtues 200 plus years later is pretty remarkable. You have the ability to go do with your life what you want and create your own happiness. That starts with the Declaration of Independence. That's, that's kind of the idea that our whole country was based upon. They built in honor and respect into our society. And that goes with honor and respect for each other, but also honor and respect for the government, sure, but also the government having that honor and respect for the citizens. Having the virtue of justice, that, that everyone has rights in this country, and if those rights are being violated, then justice will be served, that we have equal justice under the law. You have a responsibility to do what's right in this country, at your job, uh, the way you treat people, in society. We stand up for each other. We look out for injustices. We pay attention and we participate in the process. That's what keeps our country great and that's what keeps us moving forward. And that's why other countries that have tried to copy our system well, if you can't understand the virtues, it's going to be hard to completely copy the United States because this is almost our belief system, who we are. And this starts all the way back with the Declaration of Independence when they were having the idea of this country and they based it on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the right to those. We kind of take for granted, I take for granted, you know, growing up in a country that has all of this. Never think, I'm just one person, I don't matter. If that was the case, we would never have heard of Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson. I could even go with Martin Luther King Jr., the Civil Rights Movement. If all of them just thought, well, I'm only one person, then that would have been a travesty because being an American is having a voice and having choice. See you next time. All right. <laughs> Thank you.
The most compliments that I receive about teaching in Sullis Academy is our social emotional teacher, Dr. Peje Monet, also the most complete. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's true. That, was, that was a joke. But actually, I, I received so many communications from, from students and parents telling me that she has helped people cope with difficult times. And that really means a lot to me. So I asked Dr. Monet if she would create a special version of her social emotional course, one that wouldn't be for everybody, uh, one that might, again, bruise the toes of some. And out of respect, this is just an optional thing. And so she has filmed some. And we pulled out one of her new courses for you to kind of get a feel for that. Dr. Peje Monet. I live in a place that um, I absolutely love. I live in a place where I get to think what I want to think, where I get to believe what I want to believe, where I um, feel like I have rights that were um, part of the founding of this place I live in. I live in a country where the person standing next to me has exactly those same rights. And um, that country, my country, is called the United States of America. It is a place that uh, I love. I have a name which does not sound like it's from my country. It's Peje Monet. In fact, I get asked many times um, where I'm from, and I'm from right here. And I said, yes, that, that name, that name has some different origins, but I am red, white, and blue. And I am as red, white, and blue as they come. Ever since I can remember, um, patriotism has run right through me, and it goes around and around. I get goosebumps when I hear certain songs about this country. And I get emotional when I think about those people who have stood for their beliefs in a belief system which wasn't very popular, to stand for the right to believe that every man has inalienable rights, to stand for the right for people to believe what they want to believe and say what they want to say, to be able to have a place where they have respect. We don't have the right to hurt each other. We don't. We don't have the right to be brutal about other people <clears throat> and other people's opinions. And um, we have the right to be tolerant. We have that right. Um, we may not agree with others, and that's fine. That is part of being human. But acting upon the disagreement or um, the belief of what they're doing is wrong and acting upon it and forcing your belief on them, that's not what I'm about. That's not what this country's about. Um, it's called the land of the free. And then you add that on because of the brave. There were men, characters, boy were they characters, the Founding Fathers, they had opinions and they had lives and they had something that was inside of them. Each one of those Founding Fathers that said, we will fight for the liberty of all men. And as soon as they put their name to that declaration, they knew that they couldn't take it back. They knew that their life was completely different and um, they didn't know how long their life would be. Um, to be able to have that kind of fire of passion inside of oneself is inspiring to me. And this country was built upon that. This country was built upon one nation under God. And my goodness, do I feel that. I. Um, I feel that all through me. 
when that flag is raised and my hand goes to my heart, I mean it. I mean it with a conviction. And, you know, may God bless America. That's what, that's what I feel. And to be able to feel that and to be able to live in this beautiful place is such a gift. And if you could remember that, and then if you could be grateful for those who came before to make it so, then you will find that fire of patriotism in you that is unquenchable, this unquenchable. May you always have the eyes to see how blessed we are. May you always have the respect for those around you, for those who went before you, for the, even the flag. May you look at that with pride and say, this is my country and I'm going to do everything within my power to make it so and, and live that way. May you remember it is one nation under God. That's how it was written. That's what it was created upon. That's how it was founded. And may God shine his light upon us. And that's my belief. That's, that's what I grew up feeling. That's what I still feel and know. Do I, do I love her? Yes. Am I proud to be of the heritage? Yes. Do I feel tremendous gratitude for those who take care of her? Yes. Do I say thank you often? Yes, I do. And I, I want you to feel that too. I want you to find that feeling. I want you to realize that we live on a very, very choice ground. So that's a little bonus, asked for and delivered. And for those of you that think that your family would benefit by watching these enhanced lessons, enhanced traditional values, you'll want to be sure and look at those. And we're documenting for you exactly what is in them so you can decide what works best for you. Now there's another major aspect to Acellus Gold that I want to get in as my final point today. And this one might take a little bit of education for some of us to kind of catch up on, on everything that's going on. Everyone by now has heard about AI. Artificial intelligence. Not everybody has completely figured out what the heck it is or what in the world it's going to mean. Educators are really concerned because in traditional education, we teach lessons to the students and then we test whether or not they've learned those lessons through methods that artificial intelligence can burn through and easily uh, pretend the student knows things the student doesn't really know. So it's created a major crisis that education is gonna to have to fa face. And it's come on so fast that no one was really ready for it. So when I was a, a student at the university, one of the first freshman engineering courses I took was how to use a slide rule. It was a whole semester long course. A slide rule is a fancy ruler like this one that has a slider in the middle, you can slide in and out, and it has a, a needle that goes up and down so you can very precisely read numbers off of this device. With the slide rule, we could add and subtract algorithms to multiply and divide. We could perform many log trig functions and other things. It was a, an amazing way to be able to solve problems. If you went to an exam or tried to do some of these engineering course assignments without a slide rule, it was virtually impossible. My second year of college, Hewlett Packard released their first scientific calculator. This little device was like a calculator, which had already come out, but it had all of the, the trig and the math functions built into it everything that slide rule could do 
to three decimal points precision this thing could do to very high precision. When these first came out, the university was very concerned and says, if you're caught with a calculator in an exam, you will flunk the course for cheating. One year later, they said, be sure to bring your calculator <laughs> to the exam. And all of a sudden, the effort that was placed on helping students figure out how to manually read a slide roll and do these calculations with it was obsolete. And everybody instead learned how to use a calculator and it really made it possible for us to learn much more, much faster. I see this as very similar to the coming forth of artificial intelligence. It changes the game. And a lot of people are saying, if you use AI to help you with a writing assignment, we will figure it out somehow and we will flunk you. Well, this has been a problem for a long time. Some people have, have hired others to write their writing assignments. Some just know where you can buy them online. Uh, we need to teach our students that the only one they're fooling by cheating is themselves. And I, I tell our team, there, there's one really good way to stop students from cheating, and that is make actually doing it and learning it faster and funner than cheating. And then watch them. And so we're trying very hard to do that. But there, there is a great opportunity that has come into the world because of this artificial intelligence. And I want to I want to make sure all of you kind of have a handle on what that means. Simply put, it means supermassive computers. Computers that are so powerful that they can do what they call the large model. Do you know what the large model is? That's when one computer reads everything on the internet, digests it, analyzes it, sorts it, so that every time that it's asked a question, it uses all of that information to answer it. And that gives it tremendous power. AI can draw, can compose music, can do so many, many things, it can program. It can program itself. In fact, artificial intelligence is, by definition, when a machine can do machine learning, it can program itself to do more complex functions. But there's something about uh, artificial intelligence that I think you need to understand. Just over a year ago, one of the engineers, a guy at Google that was working on their artificial intelligence program, shocked the world when he made an announcement that their computer learning model their AI learning model they developed had become sentient. I'd like to show you this picture of this fellow. His name is Blake Lemoyne. And he said this, if I didn't know exactly what it was, which is this computer program we built recently, I think it was a seven-year-old or eight-year-old kid that happens to know physics. <laughs> Blake thought this computer had become so advanced that it had become conscious. It was alive. And he even went so far as to say he thought it now had rights as a, as a living being. Well, um, he may have jumped the gun. And while AI is very, very, very good at mimicking responses of conscious beings, no one has built a conscious computer or a sentient computer, so it's not sentient. Now, I want to, I want to get this right, sentient. Uh, this word may be a little hard to read from those, but maybe if I put it here, we can get, the, get it with the overhead camera, especially if I turn it over. Okay, there we go. Can you see that? So, it's sentient. And that means that it has conscious. I'm going to go ahead and pin this on me because... <laughs> because you are. I am sentient. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm alive. You are, definitely. And I've got one for her. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Well, is this, what does this imply? To be decided. <laughs> can I just All hold right. it? Yeah, you can, you can hold that if you want. <laughs> so there is something about living, living people that is different than even the most powerful computer. Powerful computers can remember many, many, many more things than we can because they've got these giant memory banks. But we have the ability of filling passions and feelings. And we have the creative ability that no computer has ever had. And I really want you to kind of understand that with me for a minute. There's a very popular program, maybe some of you have already experimented with it, it's called ChatGPT. It's the first AI system that is widely available, and you can even try it out for free, unless you decide you like it too much and use it too often, then they're gonna start charging you for it. But ChatGPT allows you to type questions to the computer, and it'll answer. And, of course, I was there first day. I wanted to, let's check this out. But when you ask the computer to write something for you, how you ask it means everything. I found that I have kind of a natural sense of being able to get it to produce really useful work. That's true. Some of the other people in our office tried it, and it didn't give them quite the same result that I did. But I realized something. I realized that it can't think. It can draw from everything that it read. Yeah. All of that knowledge, every, every definition, every word, every grammar structure, but it can't think of a new thought. So when I talk to it, I have to tell it what I want in a way that gives it the keys that it needs to then go and create it. And as a result of that, I've been able to get some really, really amazing things out of it. Now, I think uh, one way to maybe make this point more, more clear, especially for some of our young, younger students, is if we, we take a minute and check on R51. I, I want to take a minute because some of you parents might be listening in tonight. R51 is an AI clone. He's a copy of me, but he's an android. And he's the 51st prototype that we've built, trying to you know, be like me. And so the little lab where he's locked up, we call Area 51. Mm -hmm. And from there, he comes on every once in a while and disrupts. <laughs> right? He does. But he really uh, does. I think with, uh, with R51, we can kind of understand a little bit better how an artificial intelligence really works. Now, pay attention and see if you can figure out whether or not this guy is sentient. Hello, <laughs> IR51. Hi, R51. Did you know that I invented the hydrogen car while I was in high school? No. What did you invent? I invented the hydrogen car. Did you really? Yes. How could you have invented it when I invented it first? I invented it better. <laughs> Did you know I wrote a book? No. Can you show us your book? Yes. I wrote my book with a Cellus Gold Edition. <laughs> Since I finished all of my lessons, I was able to do the special learning activities. I chose write a book. I decided to write my book about when I invented the hydrogen car. So first I had to pick a city and then this was the hard part. I had to invent the hydrogen car. So I invented it and put it right there. <laughs> Is that all? No. Did you know that I made a new invention? I invented the idea of using a solar collector and a windmill to collect energy to make the hydrogen for the hydrogen car. 
How do you like that? I am making a new invention right now. I'm inventing a way to make the hydrogen to fuel a hydrogen car. I can make it with solar and wind power. I can make the hydrogen to fuel the hydrogen car. Did you know I invented the hydrogen car? <laughs> You're copying. But I like it when my good ideas get copied. Thank you. <laughs> Did you know I invented Peugeot Monet? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you better pull that face. <laughs> All right, so I hope something useful came out of that. Oh but you see the idea, oh artificial intelligence takes our creative, conscious thoughts and writes them down for us. And learning how to drive AI is all of a sudden one of the highest priorities we have on this after the birth of AI planet. One of the things about a Celis Gold Edition is that we have built into this system teaching the students to think sentient thoughts, to think and to direct AI. And I think that's extremely, extremely important. The, the purpose, the mission, the tasks that people are going to do from this point forward are gonna be different. We're not gonna do the things that AI can so easily do for us. And that sets us free on a higher level. AI is gonna level the playing field. We're gonna find that many students of many backgrounds and even education levels are able to make meaningful contributions because all they need is a creative new thought and then AI will, will help bring it to pass for them. Okay, so we have come to the conclusion of our time mm. and um, I hope that you have as much excitement as I do about this next generation of Acellus, Acellus Gold. My goal is very clear. My goal is to help all of those that I call my kids, all of our Cella students, to achieve success in their studies. And now, whatever you learn, whatever intellectual power you gain through your studies and your education is going to be amplified with, with these new AI technologies and you're going to do even more and more marvelous things. So my message is the same, study hard, study hard, study hard. It's worth it. And I'll give you the last word. I think that a solo school is gonna change a lot of kids' lives, I really do, and parents' lives, and I'm very excited about it. I know you have more coming on it, but I think it's exciting. That was more than one word. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. See you next time. <laughs>